Okay, so let's talk about compression on an acoustic guitar. So I'm going to go into my audio effects and open up just the stock compressor here on Ableton. And let's point out just a few of the uh, common parameters you're going to see on every compressor. So first and foremost is this threshold, right? So the threshold, if I lower it down, basically that's when compression is going to happen. Because when the audio signal from the guitar in this example crosses that of the threshold, the compressor then comes on okay so as I lowered it down you can see this gain reduction line start to glow orange which indicates how much gain is being reduced so to define a compressor it's basically an automatic gain reducer um, it can also be an automatic gain increaser if it's um, an expander but let's not get into that just yet but basically if it doesn't cross the threshold, compression won't happen. All right. Now, the next thing is the ratio. So the ratio talks about how much compression is going to happen when the compression does happen, if that makes sense. So basically, if we have a two to one ratio, if there's two decibels of sound coming in, one decibel basically comes out. We increase this ratio it's going to be more of an intense compression, if you will. There's more compression. So if we do all the way up to infinity one, that means it is going to 100% not let anything above that threshold that you set, right? So we don't want to go that extreme on the instance of a acoustic guitar. We don't want to be limiting it, which infinity to one is basically a limiter. So somewhere between three and six might be a good starting point. Right, but just remember that there are no rules. These are just guidelines to get you started and your ears are gonna tell you what whatever song you're mixing needs. I'm gonna set it to a four to one, right? Cause that's not too liberal, that's not too conservative. We're probably gonna be able to hear it and it's probably gonna sound pretty natural right there. Let's go ahead and listen. Okay, so we're definitely hearing the compression there, right? I can change the view on this Ableton compressor, and this yellow dot basically shows where the threshold's at, and anytime audio crosses it. And then this view shows us, in a real-time fashion, sort of the waveform analysis and when compression's happening. And at this point, we've got way too much compression happening. You can see that it's pretty much always happening there. And if our goal is just to reduce the peaks and control the overall loudness and balance it out, we've gone way too far here. Let's bring that comp uh, the threshold up. All right, we see it's only kicking in at these very particular peaks in the waveform, and that's cool. That's what we're going for. <laughs> And right here, it's pretty much compressing the entire time. We don't want that, all right? So let's be subtle with it. We found a nice medium ground, which happens to be about minus 12 dB, the threshold, the four to one ratio. Let's see what happens when we kick the ratio up even more. It's more strict, okay? Let's go see what happens when we kick the ratio down to just a one to one. You're not really getting any compression. So that's why I say somewhere around four to one, five to one, six to one is a good starting point. Let's just, again, let's start at four. Okay, next, let's look at the attack and release settings. So it's basically pretty simple to understand that the attack time is the time it takes for the compression to start happening once it crosses the threshold, okay? So remember, if it doesn't cross the threshold, no compression's happening. So the attack time, quick, here, slow, here. One second, as slow as this one goes, and 0 0.01 milliseconds, as fast as this one goes. So, this acoustic guitar being strummed, it's pretty fast tempo, it's a lively performance, and it's played sort of percussive, right? So we definitely want a faster attack time to control the peaks in a percussive waveform. 
So let's kind of get it set a bit extreme. So we're here into compression, right? I'm gonna kick that threshold down a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and kick the ratio up quite a bit too. Now I'm gonna play with the attack time. Let's go very slow attack. Verse really fast. Okay, which one did you hear more compression happening? Well, that your answer should be the fast one, right? If we go too fast, you're going to start to get some distortion, and we don't want that. So let's do it somewhere around at 0 0.10 milliseconds, yeah? Okay, let's look at the release. The release is the time that it takes for compression to let off once it has happened, okay? So slow release for a fast-tempoed song is not ideal because it'll be compressing still by the time the next peak happens right that's what's difficult with fast songs and then you hear what's called pumping and we don't want that to happen let me show you what that is i'll show you i'll go to the end of the song where he holds a chord out let's go super extreme on all levels and let's see what a you know two second release sounds like You can see the gain reduction letting it off, and it's just such a slow release. You hear it pumping, right? We don't want a release that slow, right? Faster release. All right, you get that compression. Well, we got way too much uh, compression happening. That's what gave us the distortion. Okay, let's go back to our, let's say, five to one setting. Got our, you know, 0 0.1 milliseconds attack. And let's do something like a uh, 15 millisecond release. Keep it kind of quick. Let's go back to that vibrant part of the song. The threshold's a bit too low. Let's take it back to about 12. All right, we got some decent compression happening. Again, there's no hard and fast rules about this, but you play with these parameters until you get it sounding exactly how you want. Let's take a look at another compressor that is included in Ableton, and it's called the glue compressor, right? So this one is a lot different. It behaves a lot differently, and you'll hear. So again, we see the threshold control. We see a ratio control. Then we see an attack and release. We also see a makeup control, right? This plugin had a makeup right here that was already set in. What the makeup is, is basically compression is reducing the loudness, right? So it's turning down the peaks. In order to compensate for that reduction, there needs to be a makeup gain where we control the loudness after compression. Okay, let's try. Move the threshold down. Okay, until we see compression happening. Let's go ahead and take a look at our ratios, four to one. Let's keep it there. Our release time is relatively middle ground. Let's make it quicker. Let's make the attack as quick as it can go. Let's see what happens here. Okay, let's bring the makeup up a bit. So we see here that this is great because the compression is really only happening at those peaks and that's all we want right now. And it's quite a bit more balanced. Okay, um, this controls the dry wet here, which is giving us sort of the effect of what's called parallel compression, where we have all dry signal when it's down to zero, and all wet when it's up to 100. So if we want to use dry wet, maybe we could go more intense on uh, lowering the threshold and the compression. So what this does is it allows the natural dynamic range of that guitar to still peer through while sort of blending in the compressed signal with it. So for something like this, I might be more lenient to do to do that since it's already a pretty balanced performance. It has a lot of energy and it's fast paced and percussive. Um, this might just help thicken it out and balance it out just how I need.
Okay, cool. Let's take a look at um, a non-stock compression plugin just to give you an idea of how you know different these can sound. So I'm using what's called H comp by Waves, and this is kind of like an 1176, which is a real classic compressor, but it has more settings, more control. So can you identify where the threshold is? Yes, right here. Okay, can you identify the ratio? Boom, right here. Attack, release. We then have a mix knob, which is the same as the dry wet was down here. We also have analog, which is a different algorithm that allows us to sort of get um, dial in different tones in the way that it reacts when the compression is happening. And we have another knob that's called punch. So they get creative nowadays on these things, right? So let's listen to what we can do here. <laughs> I'm gonna just set the threshold just to catch the peaks like we've been doing, but I'm gonna make the ratio a bit more extreme, eight to one. Let's make a quick attack. Let's make a quick release. Let's keep the punch down. Let's keep the wet all the way up. Let's see what we get. Distortion, so way too much is happening. I'm gonna kick the threshold to where um, it requires a louder signal to cross. To me, that sounds pretty nice, and it's really controlling those peaks well. Okay, let's try a different analog. Okay, I like two, which is where it was at. And I like the subtlety. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use this as my first compressor. I'm gonna get rid of the OG Ableton compressor there. So my first compression is gonna control the peaks and then I'm gonna use this other one to sort of thicken it all up. There we go. Okay, then after compressing it, you might add another EQ in. And the reason is, is because these things, these compressors add color, right? And sometimes you hear some more energy in the mid range, um, in the low mids when you start adding these. So let's... And I'm not getting too finely detailed on it, just using my ears to kind of guide me. And then there we got a little bit more of a balanced uh, guitar sound. So take these ideas of using different compressors that you may have from the stock plugins that come with your DAW to any fancy ones you may have bought and compare them, see which one see which ones work for whatever um, instrument you are mixing and s sort of just take note of what each control does and how it alters the sound. And as you do it more and more and more, you're going to start to refine how you compress your sounds to get better and better sounds to fit your creative desires. But I hope this um, basically demonstrated some of the basic uses of any common compressor that you can then apply to acoustic guitar and therefore any other instrument that you desire.